Good morning and welcome to Concord United Methodist Church. It's the third Sunday of Advent and we are so glad that you're joining us. We hope that you will continue to join us throughout this Advent season. Welcome. We hope you find this your new home. Thank you. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. 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 Please join me in the responsive reading. King of all the earth, creator of the universe, holy triune God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are Lord. Our souls long for your courts, O Lord of hosts. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. Our hearts and our souls rejoice in the living God. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. We have found a home in your presence, our King and our God. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. King of all the earth, creator of the universe, holy triune <clears throat> God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are Lord. Our souls long for your courts, O Lord of hosts. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. Our hearts and our souls rejoice in the living God. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. We have found a home in your presence, our King and our God. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. Who is like our God, the one who strengthens his people? This is our God, the Holy One, the one who reveals himself to all who seek after him. Come before him with thanksgiving and offer him the sacrifice of praise with joy and celebration. In the name of Christ who is coming, we pray, amen. Will you please join us now and lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. Savior 
Okay, where is it? Read Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. John 1, 9 through 13. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. We want everything to look nice, the decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, Bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland <clears throat> instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirits of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our hope and love, and now our joy in the beautiful things of this season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Please join us in singing, O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. It's now time for our missions and ministries messages. Well, a week ago, a week from yesterday, a week ago yesterday, we had a wonderful gathering of the hogs, 
the Harley Owners Group. They rode their motorcycles, 25 of them, into our parking lot, and they brought toys for the tots who would not otherwise have gifts this Christmas. We collected 168 toys for tots, both from the Harley, Harley riders, the cars that, they, that came with them, and our own congregation who came. Thank you to them. Thank you to the fire station, Station 8, who collected those toys and will disperse them. It was a grand time. You'll see some pictures at the end of this service. Thank you. Okay, we're having a virtual fellowship time uh, today at 11.15 uh, via Zoom. If you have not gotten an email invitation, please send Pastor Lee your email address and he will be glad to uh, send you that link. Gift cards. Uh, we have a new system now for doing our gift cards. It's direct sales and delivery. See uh, our website, conqueredumc.org for details. You can sign up with a code. Remember, do not add a period afterward. Okay, so there it is. Sincere appreciation to Faye, Harriet, Marilyn, Johanna, and Valerie for their dedicated service over these many years of uh, keeping us going with this uh, ongoing fundraiser. Uh, contact Carolyn at 925-212-8781 uh, with questions or to purchase from our current inventory. Christ Care Men's Group. Uh, this is a group of our fellows, they meet via Zoom on the first and third Fridays of each month from 1030 till noon. The foundation is based on getting to know each other, getting to know the Bible, mission outreach, concerns and prayer, and health, diet, and exercise. And this coming Friday will be the third Friday, so you might want to join them. Give uh, Jim McGuire a call if you're interested, and he'll get you hooked up. Uh, Ruby Slippers, uh, this is uh, Hope Solutions is presenting this uh, uh, event. Uh, it's going to be uh, on February the 27th, uh, 2021. It's a virtual gala and it will be benefiting the local homeless families and individuals. So uh, take a look at this and uh, join if you can. Disciples Under Construction. This is a group that meets on Sundays via Zoom at three o'clock. Please join us. Uh, Michelle uh, Pope is conducting this particular group. For the Zoom invite, uh, please uh, contact Michelle at aseb.org. Followers of Christ Small Group Meeting. Uh, this group meets the last Saturday of every month from five to seven on Zoom. And all the small group leaders are welcome. Please come and learn how to lead small groups and share your insights and worship God together. Unshakable Hope. This is a small group for our 30s and 40s members. Uh, if you'd like to join, give Pastor Lee your email address. Uh, they're now reading the book Fearless, and it's talking about trusting God more and fear less. If you want to do a movie or a book review, uh, we're still waiting for people to uh, contact us and let us know what you're doing. Uh, if you have read a book or a movie, uh, what is the content? Where did you find God in there? And what would be an appropriate scripture that goes well with uh, your version of, of the uh, book or movie? If you're interested, contact Pastor Lee and uh, we will get you uh, set up to uh, pr do a presentation for us during the service. Memorial Service for Red Moat, December 14th at one o'clock at Vaca Hills Chapel at 524 Elnira Road in Vacaville. Uh, 3.30 will be the grade size service at the Dixon Military Cemetery. Four planes will fly in honor of Red. And Red and his wife, they were just uh, dear members of our church for many years. And then Red uh, actually moved up to Vacaville. So 
We will miss, miss him. He was quite a guy. Chuck and Diane Rogers. Both Chuck and Diane Rogers passed away recently. A family-only graveside memorial service will be held on Thursday, December 17th. Please pray for the Rogers family, it includes their daughter, Kathy, and their son, Scott. And now it's time for the children's moment. And uh, I will pre be presenting that today. And it's going to be about the Advent wreath that you have been seeing during the service. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about Advent. Advent, which begins the church liturgical year, began this year on December the 3rd. It encompasses the four Sundays and weekdays leading up to the celebration of Christmas. Now today we are on the third Sunday of Advent, and this is a time of preparation for our hearts and our minds for the anniversary of the Lord's birth on Christmas. Our Advent wreath in our sanctuary is, no, is in the front of the sanctuary, and uh, it has um, a green wreath around it and candles during Advent. And it was a long-standing Catholic tradition that is originally adopted by Christians in the Middle Ages as part of their spiritual preparation for Christmas. Now that means that was several hundred years ago, okay? Bill, can we see the Advent wreath, please? Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Even the individual evergreens that make up the green wreath have their own meaning that can be adapted to our faith. Some of the wreaths are made out of laurel, which signifies victory over persecution and suffering. And some wreaths have pine, holly, or even yew branches, signifying, signifying immortality, and the cedar signifies strength and healing. Some wreaths even have pine cones that decorate the wreaths symbolizing life and resurrection. The wreath as a whole is meant to remind us of both the immortality of our souls and God's promise of everlasting light life to us through Christ. Now here's a little bit of information about the candles that you see in front of you. The candles also have their own special meaning. The four candles represent the four weeks of Advent and the white candle in the middle is lit on the Christmas Eve or that Sunday of Christmas. Three of the candles are purple because the color violet is a liturgical color that signifies a time of prayer, penance, and sacrifice. And that particular candle, the first candle, is the candle of hope. The second candle is also purple. It represents faith, and it is called the Bethlehem candle as a reminder of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem, and that is the love candle. The third candle, which is the one for today, is pink and symbolizes joy. It is called the shepherd's candle and is pink because rose is a liturgical color for joy. The third Sunday of Advent is uh, Gaudé Sunday, and it's meant to remind us of the joy that the world experienced at the birth of Jesus, as well as the joy that the faithful have reached that midpoint of Advent. And the fourth candle for the fourth week, which will be next Sunday, we light a final purple candle to mark the final week of prayer and penance as we wait for the birth of our Savior. This final candle is the angel's cam candle, symbolizing peace. It reminds us of the message of the angels, and that is the peace candle. So as you look at our Advent wreath, know that there is meaning in everything that you see, and we will enjoy our wreath as we continue on with our service. Amen. Please, uh, we will now have our anthem, In the Bleak Midwinter, by Russ Klasko and Bill DeGarmo.
iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, Angels and archangels, they have gathered there. Cherubim and seraphim, throng in the air. But his mother only, in her maiden bliss, Oh, how beautiful that was. Thank you, Bill and Russ. This is the time in the service, as Michelle always said, we'd be getting up and hugging each other and talking, talking, talking to each other. What do you miss most about not being able to do that? I miss my grandson, Asher, who has learned very well from afar to blow kisses. So today, hug yourself and send that hug out to everybody. And today, let's say that the peace of God be with you. The peace of God be with you. The peace of God be with you. Have a good day. Blessings. The scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 84, verses 1 through 12. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun in shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Lord, grant the great reading and understanding of his word. Amen. Now will you please join me in singing, How Lovely, Lord, How Lovely. upon your grave. 
needs a shelter, a place to build her nest. And so your temple calls us within its walls to rest. In your blessed courts to worship, O oh God, a single day is better than a from you should stray. I'd rather keep the entrance and claim you as my Lord than revel in the riches the ways of sin afford. A son and a shield forever are you, O oh God, with blessings no good will you deny the saints your grace receiving from strength to strength shall go and from their life shall rivers of blessings Yes, the hymn express our feelings. How lovely is your dwelling place. And we all miss our church buildings. Since last March, we have not entered into our sanctuary. The psalmist says that he would rather be a doorkeeper of God's house, saying, for a day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. So I guess the ushers of our church are the most, the happiest people in the world. <laughs> they want to be a doorkeeper of the sanctuary. This is how many of our church members feel. Especially during this Advent season, we usually have special decorations of our sanctuary, hanging of the green service, at the beginning of Advent, would have put all the ornaments and lights in the sanctuary to show that Jesus is the light of the world. Even when we focus on our church building and sanctuary, however, God shines God's light upon the world to bring all God's children into God's kingdom, family of God. God has more interest in the world. John chapter 1, verse 9 to 13 says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. So the light is not coming into only in the sanctuary. It came into the world to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name. He gave the right to become children of God. See here, we focus on the sanctuary and God focus on the world. Isaiah 61 verse 1 through 3 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, the poor people. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, and comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. So those bold group, six groups are the main focus of God. God wants us to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So that's the kind of mission of our church to bring good news to those six groups and help them to find joy in the life. They will be called Ox of Righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. That's what God wants. God cares for the world condition. So do we. Both the Old Testament and New Testament from Isaiah to John, we can tell that God cares for the world condition. 
We should also care for the condition of our community and of the world, especially the six groups that Isaiah mentioned, the poor, the brokenhearted, the captives, the prisoners, all who mourn, and all those who grieve. John declares that God shines light of Jesus upon all people in the world, especially in those six groups in Isaiah. Then how do we bring joy to those people? You know, we all know the principle, but you know, the devils are in detail and we have to know how. Then how do we bring joy to the world? Here is a story. There was a woman and a do her daughter. Every Christmas Eve, they went to their church. They enjoyed the church choir and Christmas children's program in a beautifully decorated sanctuary. It looks like our church. It could be our church, but this story is from United Methodist Woman uh, Study Book. So the, some of you have already studied this story. But one year, the pastor asked them to join the prison ministry Christmas program. They were supposed to sing Christmas carols in a prison for the inmates. I don't know how many of you have done that, but yeah, I have done that quite a lot when I was in my uh, young adult groups. So when they arrived at the prison, however, they were told that the electricity temporarily went out because of a snowstorm. So there was no electricity and then they could not run the security system. They could not even go into the prison because all the security system run by electricity stopped working. So they waited for a while outside of the prison, hoping that the electricity comes back shortly. Everybody was just shivering in a cold winter night. Just imagine how cold it is. It's not in California. When they almost gave up the program and decided to come back, one person in the group pointed out the small windows of the prison. You know, the prison says they have just a small windows to have some air. They cannot even look outside the world or through the window. But what they did was the, all the inmates, they sang silent night. And silent night, holy night. And then they hold the small lights to show their appreciation through the small windows. So all the windmates, they knew that the choir is coming, but because of the electricity, they could not come, up, come in and they are all waiting outside. When they heard that news, they showed their light, maybe a small flashlight, and then sang silent night. The woman and the daughter, they said later that it was the most beautiful Christmas Eve worship that they had had. They stood outside of a prison, but they felt that they were in a sanctuary where God was worshiped. So many of us think the sanctuary is only in one place. But she testified that sanctuary is everywhere. In other words, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we are the temple. Even though we cannot go back to our church building now, we can still worship God in many different ways. We can still find joy in God. So find persons who need God. Spend time with them. Show God's love in concrete ways. Maybe you can send the cars to Roger's family who lost both father and mother now. May God give us wisdom while we share our time and talent and treasure with others during this Advent. And may God allow us the experience of God's sanctuary everywhere we go. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your presence in our lives. We realize that you are the light and we are the temple. We want to shine your light everywhere we go to the people whom we meet. Use us as a channel of your blessings to all the people around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Well, this is the time in our service where the ushers would be walking down the aisles and passing offering plates. But that can't happen. But you saw that Concord United Methodist Church is still involved in many missions and ministries. So you can still mail a check to Concord UMC, 1645 West Street, Concord, California, 94521. Or, like I do it, online bill pay. I have a terrible memory. And if I have to remember to mail a check every month, church wasn't going to get a check. So I set it up with my bank. Ask your bank for information. They'll let you know how to do it. Be a part of our mission and ministries at Concord United Methodist Church. Blessings on all of you. prayers of the people. Uh, as you saw in the previous slide, uh, our dear friends uh, Chuck and Diane Rogers both died this week. Uh, Chuck passed away last Sunday and Diane passed away um, Thursday. So our prayers go out to uh, their daughter and son and extended family. Um, we will really miss them. They were a key part of our church for many, many years and served in the community. So our hearts are saddened at the loss of them. Uh, we have prayer requests for Bill DeGarmo's sister, Lori. Um, she is uh, waiting um, the results of a biopsy that will be happening soon. And we're looking for good news in that, that decision. I want to lift up our daughter, Cheryl. Um, she is a UPS driver, and yesterday she sprained her ankle delivering packages. So she is laid up, and we want to pray for healing um, for her. And I want to lift up her prayers for the brokenhearted, for those who have lost loved ones um, this year, whether they're in our church family or those that you are friends with have known. It's, uh, it's a really tough time and um, the Lord promises to pray for the brokenhearted and we want to lift up those families to you. And uh, on a lighter note, we want to celebrate the joys of new birth that have happened this year. Uh, whether you're a new grandparent or uh, uncle or just friends and you know, of new babies. Uh, Lord, this will be the first Christmas for these families and just bless them as they start the traditions of their lives. So with that, we will close in prayer. Let us pray together. Lord, we pray for those who lost their beloved family members, father, mother, or other people. Especially, we pray for the Rogers family, Chuck and Diane Rogers, who have been so faithful, pillars of our church, doing all kinds of ministry for the people in this community. They passed away within four days together. Comfort the family members and help them to renew their faith and find hope in your promises. The, this will be the first Christmas for them to have without their parents. Lord, we pray for all those who have to have this lonely Christmas or blue Christmas without their loved ones for the first time. Comfort all of us and make us 
a channel of your blessing for them. And Lord, we pray for the joy of those people who have new family members, and this would be their first Christmas for them to have family additions, new babies, new puppies, new brothers and sisters. Lord, give them joy of having new supporters and families so that we all can live together in your love. We pray for Cheryl, Carol's daughter, who have sprained in her ankle. There are so many people who are now struggling to restore their faith and physical strength. Be with them and help them to find path to recovery. We also pray for Bill's sister Lori. She is waiting for the result of biopsy. Give her good news, saying that she can live without any worries. We pray for all those people who are waiting for the vaccines. Lord, thank you for all the efforts and works of the scientists and medical researchers who finally make the vaccines available to many of us. Bless all of those workers and first responders and essential workers. We want to share this good news with all of the world. So bless our country when we share our vaccines with many other people in the world. Bless us as a source of your life-giving country. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as they forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now join us in His Eye is on the Sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let him not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts.
watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all who find joy everywhere when we worship God ever and forever. Amen.